Okay guys, in this video I'm going to be rebuilding the Aurora 100 and uh, this, these are the guts from the Aurora 100. I finally broke that frame because uh, that uh, frame has got a pretty weak set of arms. For one thing, the plate on that on that uh, frame was only one and a half millimeters and there was holes in the arm and I ended up breaking it right at the uh, where the motor comes in. There's a little, there's a little gap, a little hole there. That just snapped on a pretty bad crash and ended up actually destroying that motor and uh, another one. So I'm um, going to rebuild this with uh, this new frame. It's um, the X2 Elf and it's an 88 millimeter frame, uh, same two inch propellers. But since I don't have any more of those motors, I'm going to be going to this motor here. This is the uh, DYS 1102 10,000 kV motor and uh, probably uh, make this whole thing much lighter. So I think overall this is going to be a lot stronger because this main plate is uh, a lot thicker than the other one. Let's see here, it should be about two millimeters. And that main plate's two millimeters. And this top plate comes in at about one and a half millimeters. And there's no holes in the arm. And uh, when I was when I was testing this out and testing for flexibility, it's quite a stiff frame. And this is this was actually pretty cheap. I actually bought two of these because they were only like six or seven dollars. Um, and they actually sold out right away. So I think they're currently sold out. Um, actually, going to order more of these when uh, they come back in stock because this is I, I actually prefer this type of frame, this H style frame, where the camera is going to be up front versus on top. I think it's a little bit uh, more protected. But again, this is going to be a pretty simple build like my other ones. I'm just going to stick on my a uh, little uh, all-in-one setup here. Oh, and by the way, I removed, this is, as uh, I mentioned before, this is from the Aurora 100. I removed the um, receiver. Uh, this is that PPM receiver that was on that uh, with the buzzer. And I don't like this because it doesn't, uh, the failsafe doesn't work correctly on PPM uh, for the FlySky uh, second generation protocol. So I just uh, desoldered those wires here and I'm just going to put my own receiver on. Just just going to use the FlySky fs uh, s and uh, it's gonna, you know, pretty simple. Just put the power set up here, camera up front, mount my motor, solder on, solder them onto the ESCs, um, and that's pretty much it. So, uh, not really gonna show you much of this build. Just gonna put it together, and I'll show you what it looks like at the very end. Okay, so here is the whole thing completed, and uh, it's actually a pretty nice looking build overall. Um, as a lot of these micros go, it's pretty easy to do. You just put on the all-in-one flight controller and ESC combo on the bottom plate, which I did here. And then I just soldered on the motor wires to the ESCs. And I actually ran the motor wires underneath um, this time instead of going to the top. So that's why you don't see any motor wires on the top. They're actually soldered underneath. And... Um, Let's see here, I put the receiver here on top, I switched it up for the uh, FS82 and I just have a zip tied to the top plate like this because I'm um, probably going to be moving this around from build to build. I just don't want to be buying uh, 25 of these because I got so many builds. The only really challenging thing for me to figure out was to how to get this camera mounted here because uh, there's no uh, TPU mount that comes with this. So all I did was I just used a little rubber band here around the lens um, and uh, pulled it to the top plate which created this nice little camera angle. It's probably like 30, 35 degrees. And I'll be putting on some of these uh, King Kong 1935 props on here. Uh, let's see what else. I um, swapped out the circular polarized antenna that was on the all-in-one camera for a linear antenna. Uh, that's my preference and uh, that was pretty much the only way to get this to fit on this top plate because if you have an all-in-one camera with a circular polarized antenna obviously it's not going to go through the top plate so this is the only way you can do it is using a whip antenna. Um, so you got my rubber band here on these two side notches and that'll hold the battery on pretty good. Yeah not a lot to this build. It, I, pr I think I like this frame a lot better than the Aurora 100 frame. It's much, much stiffer. Um, I think it's going to fly better too. Uh, other than that, uh, not much else to, to figure out. Uh, I've just got to go fly it. 
Okay, so one of my uh, subscribers was asking about this frame and was wondering if the props show up in the FPV camera. And just a little bit on each side, um, actually just barely a little bit on the right side here you can see. And on the left side it doesn't appear to be showing up at all. And so it probably has to do with the field of view of the camera, so you can see here that on the left side not showing up, but on the right side got a little bit showing up right there. Which is really not that bad compared to a lot of the other frames out there. So if you guys are wondering if the props show up in, in the view of this camera on this frame, that's your answer. Okay, so here's what it looks like with the props on, and uh, we'll get a final weight measurement now. So all together with uh, everything except for the battery, it comes in at about 45 and a half grams, and I think that's largely due to the 1102 motors being quite a bit less in weight. Let me just grab one of those 1102 motors. So just to satisfy everyone's curiosity, uh, this 1102 motor comes in at about uh, three and 3.4 grams, and the previous motor was the 1104 7500 kV, the Yushin one that came with the Aurora 100, and that one's about uh, 5.8 grams, so about 2.4 grams more. Anyway guys, I'm going to go ahead and roll a little bit of flight footage for you, um, and give you some thoughts on how it flies. I think it's going to fly pretty good, it's my expectation. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions about this build. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. So right off the bat, I could tell that this was flying extremely well. And um, overall, my thoughts after this flight were that the uh, flight characteristics were a little bit slower, obviously because of the smaller motors, but it was still very smooth and very predictable. And I actually enjoyed flying this quite a bit. I could almost even say that it flew better than the Aurora 100. Um, just a little bit slower. Actually, it was actually faster than I was expecting for the size of the motor. So if you're kind of and looking for something, you know, like a little, little park cruiser somewhere in a tight space where you're not going to be going too fast, this is probably a pretty good setup. The other thing that really stood out was how quiet the motors and props were for uh, the flight. And uh, yeah, if you're looking to fly somewhere where there's going to be maybe be some people around or you just want to attract a lot of attention, Going with a smaller motor and these two inch props is uh, actually a pretty good way to go. I know if you go to like a four bladed or five bladed prop with a bigger motor, it does generate more noise and actually attract more attention. So if you're trying to avoid that, uh, this is actually a really good setup for that. At the same time, this still had plenty of power for uh, a fast flight and uh, acrobatic maneuvers. So you can't say that it's a, it's a weak flyer because of um, the motors because it's so light and it still has plenty of power if you need it. Anyway guys, I think this is a really solid frame and for about seven bucks, you really can't lose. Uh, it is a tight build because um, the smaller size of the frame is only 80 millimeters, so you do have to sort of choose your components wisely and um, figure out how to mount things like your camera and where you want to put your receiver and such. But uh, yeah, I think it's sold out again. I went to go uh, try and buy some more of these and they were already, they, they came in stock and then went out of stock uh, before I had a chance to buy any. So um, I would just like go take a look at these uh, frames again and see when they come in stock and just buy a bunch of them because uh, for seven bucks uh, you can replace a lot of the um, uh, other frames that have been broken or such that uh, like that's pretty much what I've been doing. I've been uh, taking parts out of uh, existing models and putting them into these uh, better frames, that, or at least the frames I think are better. So this is definitely, I think, a winner. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.